everyone, it's Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm a reseller. I've been reselling for 18 years. I sell mainly on eBay and Poshmark, a little bit on Macari, Facebook Marketplace, and Amazon. Today I have a what sold video. I am going to share items that sold the week of July 10th through 16th, 2022. I sold a total of 34 items for a gross amount of $840.04. I was a full-time reseller for the first 16 and a half years, or at least as full-time as I could be raising three children. And for the last year and a half, I have taken on YouTube and now I've scaled back and I put in about 10 to 15 hours a week. So the numbers that I share in my what sold videos each week are a reflection of how much I'm making gross and profit for putting in about 10 to 15 hours a week. Before we get started, I need to announce the winner of the July 15th inventory giveaway. I recorded my screen as I used a YouTube random comment picker to choose the winner. So let's right here and see who the winner is of the July 15th giveaway. If you look in the top left hand corner, you can see the time. I said in the haul video that I would use a random YouTube comment picker and when the clock turned nine o'clock on July 20th, if you had the word brand in your comment, you were entered to win. And the winner is Linda. I'm not sure how you pronounce your username. I think it's Biter Gillette, but I know that's Linda. Yay, congratulations. Congratulations, Linda. I am so excited that you won. Linda is one of those viewers that has become a friend. Enjoyed so much getting to know you, Linda, and I was absolutely thrilled when your name came up as the winner. So just email me at love 2 shop 242 and let me know the items that you would like for me to send or we've communicated through Poshmark before too. You can reach me that way also. So now let's get started. I sold the most items on Poshmark this week. I sold 17 items for a gross amount of $458. The first one was in a recent Goodwill bins haul. This was the Scully Patriotic Western Shirt extra, extra large. I put USA, American flag, red, white, blue, 54 inch chest on the title. It sold for a gross amount of $32. My earnings were $25 and 60 cents. I paid just $1 and 10 cents at the Goodwill outlet in Oklahoma City, otherwise known as the bins. My bins is just 99 cents a pound if I get 25 pounds or more. It took 29 days to sell and my profit was $25 and 60 cents. And the interesting thing is, is that I purchased this shortly before July 4th. And so I thought, oh, I just have a limited time to sell it. I listed it. Then we went on vacation to South Dakota. So I had it not for sale. We get back and I thought, oh, it's going to be a long time before it sold but it sold after the 4th of July. And I find that that happens all the time. After Christmas, I will find Christmas items that people donate. I will go ahead and list them sometimes because I wanna quickly get it listed and it will sell after Christmas time. And it should not surprise me by now, but people buy things year round. Maybe they were wanting that shirt for this 4th of July, they didn't have it. So they're thinking about it and want to prepare for the next year. I don't know, but I'm really happy that it sold. Some of the style tags that I use, I have been incorporating incorporating style tags on my listings on Poshmark because after watching the Poshmark search hacks events, they talked about how important that was. So I put style tags USA, flag, and patriotic. I also on the listing put that there was a small stain on the cuff, that there was a little discoloration on the collar and I put, but it's such a cool shirt and it's really hard to see those things you really have to look. So always point out flaws and I find that things sell all the time, even if there are flaws. I always tell them about the flaw, but I try to counteract that by telling them something that's very desirable about this shirt. And I thought this was a really nice cool shirt. So I was sure to point that out. The next item came from my South Dakota haul. This was the two women's Bali minimizer bra satin tracings underwire. They were both size 38 triple D. One was blue, one was pink, and they had a leopard print. 
When listing women's bras, it is a great idea to point out when a bra has extra wide shoulder straps and they're padded. That's a very desirable feature. So I pointed that out on my listing. I also put that they were in very nice condition, but I found a spot on the back of one strap. So I did disclose that and I did say that it was very hard to notice. I also put that this listing is one price for both bras. That is a frequently asked question if I have two items, people will ask, is this price for one or two? So I try to put that in the listing so that they don't have to spend the time to ask that question and they can just purchase it immediately. They sold for $20. My earnings were $13.32. I paid $3.50 for each of them, so a combined total of $7. I purchased them at the Goodwill in South Dakota on my vacation. They took 13 days to sell, and my profit was only $6.32. But I was so excited. Things were selling so fast from that haul, and I've almost sold out of all of the bras. Now I only have one left, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to almost double my money. Quick, easy, I'm good with that and I was happy to sell them. Bras are so easy and quick to list. Then I had a bundle sell of two items that had been sitting for a little while. I had a haul approximately 10 months ago where I sourced from a dry cleaners. And if you haven't seen that, you might want to go back and watch it because it was a really neat sourcing opportunity. I had one wedding dress left. So I received an offer. They bundled this moonlight crystal wedding dress with this vintage Illy wax coat. The coat had been sitting for one year four months and 16 days. The wedding dress had been hanging in my closet for nine months and 26 days. They sent an offer to me for $150. That was a little less than I thought it could sell for, but I thought Poshmark, no returns. Those are two items that I would not want to have returned. And I thought, those have been sitting for a little while on the wedding dresses. I already made a great profit on that haul. So I would love to have the last one sold and make room in my closet for other items that could sell. I'm still going to make a good profit on the jacket. It has not done as well as I thought it would. I bought a lot of jackets that day. That haul was so good. I made a great profit on that haul. So since it has been a long time on these items, I thought, you know what? I'm okay with taking less than I had originally planned. So I accepted the offer for $150. I decided that I was going to value them. 80% of the sell went towards the wedding dress and 20% of the sell went to the coat. So that's what I do when I have a bundle. I kind of assign the value. It's okay with anything on the jacket, but I really didn't want to sell the wedding dress for less than 120. So that's how I divided the funds. I thought this wedding dress was absolutely beautiful. It was the Moonlight Crystal Mermaid Wedding Dress, size 10. Since it was worth a good amount of money, I thought it was worth the time to use the video feature and include that in my listing. And I felt like it was able to capture the dress a little bit better than just using photos. I looked up the style name on the tag and was able to find the exact dress. So I put the stock photo in, but I did put second photo is a stock photo. Photo. The other photos are all the actual dress. I also figured out from looking at that stock photo that the straps were not original. So I was sure to note that and let them know that they could easily remove them if they wanted to wear it strapless. I tried to take as many pictures as I could. Another benefit of locating that style number and looking it up was that I was able to get the exact description of the dress. So I knew by copying and pasting their description that I was describing the dress correctly. I also was able to put that it was freshly dry cleaned since I sourced it from the dry cleaners. So the Moonlight Crystal Wedding Dress sold for $120, that's 80% of the sale, 80% of the earnings was $75.46. I paid $25 at the dry cleaners. It took nine months and 26 days to sell, and my profit was $50.46 on the jacket.
This was the Waxworks Vintage Long Red Coat Jacket. It was a long length. It had the union tag. It was made in the USA. It did not have a size tag, but I estimated that it was a size medium. I found this jacket with a lot of other vintage jackets, and so I thought I would take a chance on it. I thought it was going to do great, but it just didn't get a lot of attention. And sometimes when I take a chance on things, they end up doing great, and sometimes they don't. But I still made a profit. It was a small profit, but I still made a profit, and I thought it was a neat jacket, and I was happy to have the opportunity to learn about the designer. It did have a few flaws, so that could have been part of the problem. Not having a size tag, not having a material tag. There were a few minor nicks and spots on the fabric, so I was sure to note that. The buttons were actually pinned on, not sewn on and there was a little tear in the lining so I noted all those things I gave it over a year to sell so finally when I got an offer bundled with another item I thought that was a great opportunity to sell it and have it find a new home and make a little more room in my inventory closet so that I could put some new items in that closet that it only sold for $30. For some reason, it just didn't have the interest that I thought it would. The other vintage coats did, they did great, but that one just didn't. My earnings were $18.86. I paid $11.31 at my local Goodwill. It took one year, four months, and 16 days to sell, and my profit was $7.55. Also, I had to upgrade the shipping on that one. So it cost me an additional $18. You have to remember that on um, Poshmark. It had free shipping, I think, on it because it deducted the $7.67 shipping. Then when I upgraded it for like eight or nine pounds, it charged me an additional $18. And I knew that going into it. I knew it was going to be over five pounds, but I really wanted to sell both of these. So I was okay with that. And I knew there was enough profit built in and that I could do that. So I I also took the additional $18 out when I was figuring out these numbers. I'm so happy to have those sold. And I just got back last night from a trip to San Antonio with my husband and I got two more wedding dresses and they are amazing. And so I'm glad I cleared out that space. I always think if I sell something, then I am opening up the opportunity to add other things in that space. Sure enough, it happened and I found two amazing wedding dresses. I've already filmed that haul. I needed to get this video out first, so that should come out soon after this video. The next item I wanted to share with you because just this morning, I had someone ask if they could return it. This was the new with tag Go Gossip Cross Signals Swim Shorts Swimsuit Top Extra Large. And I usually put XL and then I spell out X with a dash and large. And I also put sporting. It sold for $20. My earnings were $16. I paid just $2 on my great swimsuit deal. It took four months and two days to sell and my profit was $14 which I accepted a pretty low offer on it, but I thought I'm still going to make a pretty good profit for a $2 investment, so I will take it. But the person received it and she sent two messages to me in a row. The first one said, this item is easy to large, I need to return it. Then she sent a second message that said, meant to say it is way too large. I normally wear an extra large, but this is swimming, must return. So I messaged her back and I said, I'm so sorry that it does not fit. Any returns have to go through Poshmark. Returns cannot be buyer or seller initiated, you would need to contact Poshmark to request a return due to fit. So she replied back, thank you. And she opened a case, I think it says something like, I am not described that I sent the wrong size or something like that. And she explained that normally she wears a size extra large, but it was too big. She took a picture of her in it and it didn't really look like it was that much too big to me, but I guess she felt that it did. And on that one, I'm okay if she sends it back. I sold it for such a low amount. Poshmark pays the shipping both ways. I won't be out anything, and chances are that I can actually resell it for higher. She's happy because she's not out of the money. It's no big deal to me. There are some items that I do not want to return, though. And if somebody is really rude or deceptive, I handle it differently. On this one, I think it could go either way. I have learned if I say, I am fine with whatever Poshmark decides to do, Poshmark will allow the return. How I respond to the buyer definitely guides Poshmark's decision. When I say, oh, I'm so sorry, it didn't fit. I am happy to take it back. If Poshmark says that they will allow it, 
Poshmark will grant the return. If I do not want the return, I say something like, I am so sorry that you are not happy with the way that this item fit. Poshmark does not allow returns due to fit, and that is one of the reasons why I sell on Poshmark, because I do not want to allow returns. Thank you, Debbie. I have not had Poshmark grant a return when I say something like that. So when the customer service rep reads that, I feel like that reminds them that is the policy. Poshmark does not return for this item, and it guides them to close the case. On this one, I handle it differently than I ever have. It's kind of neutral. I told them that they could open a request Quest, and I didn't say I'm absolutely against it. No, I don't accept returns. But at the same time, I did not say I am happy to take the return if Poshmark says it's okay. So we will see how Poshmark handles it when I respond it this way, and I will let you know what they say. Then the last one that I'm going to share on Poshmark was an item that I kind of deep down knew it was iffy, but I wanted to try it. I found this on my Ross haul and the print was just out there and it drew my attention and I thought, hmm, this one could sell for a really good amount if the right person finds it. I also found some really high sold comps, but not a lot. It was a men's size small, so I should have known better. I still made a profit, but, but it took a little while to sell and it wasn't a big profit and it was a very small profit compared to what I paid, but I didn't lose money. This was the new of tags, reason money calls, button front shirt, men's size small. It sold for $20. My earnings were $16. I paid $9.77 at Ross. It took 10 months and 20 days to sell, and my profit was $6.23. But I find that with hauls, you have to look at the overall picture, and overall, that haul was great. So this one did not do as well. Usually the ones that sell great sell right away for a high amount, a lot of times higher than I think. They sell at the top of my range. Then as it goes longer and longer, I'm willing to accept less if it's been a lot longer. So that one didn't sell for very much, but I'm grateful to get my money back and a little bit of a profit. Next on eBay, I sold 16 items for $359.32. The first one was the Pioneer Woman Breezy Blossom 1.05 quart mini Dutch oven lid new inbox. So I had new at the beginning and at the end I put NIV for new inbox also. It sold international to the United Kingdom. It sold for a gross amount of $62.39. It was $28.99 plus international shipping. I paid $7.29 at my local Goodwill. It took three months and 29 days to sell and my profit was $16.50. In my last wet sold video, I had a piece of lingerie and I said I had found several pieces all together. The first one that sold was a Secret Treasures, which is sold at Walmart for $27. Well, two more of them sold the following week, but the next two were both Victoria's Secret, but I listed them all at the same time. Things like this usually sell very quickly for me. This one was Victoria's Secret, chemise, nightgown, lingerie, satin, lace, lilac, sheer. It sold for $19.74. My earnings were $14.01. I paid just 17 cents at the Goodwill Outlet Center in Oklahoma City. It took six days to sell. Then they took an additional three days to pay. So a total of nine days. And my profit was $13.84. And this one was funny because they left some kind of note in French and I used Google Translate to translate it. And it, and it said something like, girlfriend going to look bang in this. And I thought, how do you reply to that? So I replied back something like, wonderful, thank you so much for your business. I hope your girlfriend loves it. Then the next one was the Victoria's Secret lingerie chemise nightgown size small black pink lace sheer. It sold for $14.80. My earnings were $9.18. I paid just 17 cents at the Goodwill bins in Oklahoma City. It took 11 days to sell and my profit was $9.01. Next, I had another fishing lure. They are still selling. I can't wait to say that they have sold out and give you the total profit on that one. This one, I'm not sure how to pronounce the brand name. It's A-R-B-O-D. G-A-S-T Arbogast Vintage 50s Hula Diver Fishing Lure. It should have said crankbait, but I left out the K and so it said crankbait. Yellow, silver. 
And a really neat thing on this one was I did not have the brand name. I was not certain of the brand, so I didn't put it on there. I got an email from somebody really nice and he was a collector of fishing lures and he told me the brand name of it and he said, this might help it sell. I would buy it, but I already have a lot of them. And he sent me pictures of his collection. He sent me articles to show about that fishing lure and that was such a nice thing for him to do because I know that helped my item sell faster and for more money. So I sent him a message after it sold and told him that it sold thanks to him. And I really appreciated his kindness and his help. It sold for $19.84. My earnings were $12.24. I paid just $1 at the garage sale in Cushing, Oklahoma. It took two months and one day to sell and my profit was $11.24. The next item was a multiple quantity item and that is one thing that I've talked about that I love having multiple quantities. This was the new with tags, $38 free people, you want a bra me, bralette crop top. I have an extra small, small, medium, and large. And when I have multiple quantities, I do put in the listing that they get a discount if they buy more than one item. So if they buy two, they get 10% off their order, three, they get 15% off, Four, they get 20% off. The two together sold for a gross amount of $29.64. My earnings were $20.46. They cost $4.56 each, so a total of $9.12, and my profit was $11.34. I have these for a year and a half, but I have a lot of them. I have an entire container of them, and they just trickle out, and it's like $5 here, $7 here, $5 here. So I love having items that sell like that. They arrived, I got positive feedback. And one thing that I do when someone purchases multiple quantities, I send a message to them when I'm shipping it out. There's a little area where it can send a message to the buyer. And I tell them, thank you so much for your purchase. I see you purchased a quantity of two and I wanted to let you know that I am including two in your order. And I started that after I had someone tell me that they only received one item when I knew for sure that I had sent both of them and I remembered sending it. I called her out on it and she said, oh, I'm so sorry. So, so now from that one experience, which that is so rare, but still I thought I'm going to from now on be sure and let the person know as I'm sending it, I'm packaging it right now. I'm including two. That way I feel like that diminishes the chance of that happening again. Also, while we are on eBay, I wanted to update you on the vintage hide leather bowling shoes that I got on my South Dakota haul, and they sold really fast for really good money, like $67. Saw the feedback that the man left, and it was so nice, and he said they were, they're awesome. The description was spot on. It was a pleasure dealing with you, and he said, if you happen to come up with a white pair of hide bowling shoes in size seven, I will purchase them for my wife and I thought oh I want to find them for him so bad so I thought I would spread the word and maybe we can all be on the lookout for a white pair of women's hide bowling shoes and if you find that pair let me know and I will connect you to him that was a really good profit sale then on Macari, I sold just one item for $22.72. It was the new tags and cold twist bandeau bikini swimsuit top. I put straps or strapless because it had the attachable strap. So I wanted to be sure my listing would be visible if they searched either way. It sold for $22.72, $19 plus $3.72 shipping. My earnings were $16.25. I paid just $1 on my great swimsuit deal. It took 29 days to sell and my profit was $15.29. And I made a mistake last week. I did have a sale on Macari. I, for some reason, thought this sale was not on my last wet sold, but it was. So I should have had it last week. So that actually puts my sales for last week. It was in the 600s. It puts it in the 700s, which for some reason feels so much better to me. But this came from my South Dakota haul also. So I wanted to go ahead and share it with you. It's not from this week, but it was a great sale. So I feel like it's still very valuable to share. It was the women's twisted X boots, size 8B. 
I put embroidered Western cowgirl. When I found the official description, it said 12 inch. So I put 12 inch in brown leather. It sold for $71.95. It was $61 plus $10.95 shipping. Chose the shipping as FedEx ground economy, which allows shipping up to five pounds for a really good price, $10.95. And the boots were heavy. I think the box was just over four pounds. So it was perfect. My earnings were $52. $2.83. I paid just $7.25 on my South Dakota haul. They just took 10 days to sell and my profit was $45.58. And those boots were not marked up. A lot of the other boots were marked up where you could see the brand name, but this did not show the brand name. It just showed the logo on the bottom, but I was familiar with the logo, so I knew to pick it up and they sold in 10 days for a great profit. So remember the Twisted X logo. And there are some things in every Goodwill that I go into, there are things that are marked up super high, but they do not catch everything. I don't think anybody can know every brand. And there are some things that are really valuable that they mark low. And then there are some things that I'm like, that's not very valuable. It doesn't even sell well anymore that they have marked super high. So I always think it's really exciting when I find something slipped through the cracks and they didn't mark up super high. So now to go over my numbers, out of the 34 items that I sold, 14 were thrifted, 12 were retail arbitrage, and eight were liquidation. I sold 34 items for a gross amount of $840.04. Money back in the bank after any fees or postage was $550.90. My cost of goods was $120.41, and my profit was $430.49. On Poshmark, I sold 17 of the items for $458. After fees, I received back $332.34. My cost of goods was $90.21, and my profit was $242.13. On eBay, I sold 16 items for a gross amount of $359.32. After fees and postage, I received back $202.31. My cost of goods was $29.20 and my profit was $173.11. On Macari, I just went over that, the $22.72 profit of $15.25. T. Coons asked a great question. It was, how did you add the arrows to your photo to point out the defect? This is something that I do all the time, so I thought it would be beneficial to share the answer with all of you. Yesterday, I was listing a pair of brown leather cachet pants. I noticed that there was an area where the stitching was just very slightly loose. So I described that in my description, but I also wanted to point an arrow so they could see exactly where I was talking about. So I went to my camera roll and found the picture that I thought would be good to add the arrow to. I clicked on that photo. Then at the top of the page, you will see where it says edit. I clicked on edit and it pulls up a new icon in that same spot. I click on it and it opens a menu at the bottom of the page. I click on the plus sign on the bottom right hand side and it pulls up a menu of items that I can choose from. I choose the arrow on the bottom right hand side and it puts an arrow on my screen. I then use my finger and touch the screen of my phone to maneuver the arrow around to exactly where I want to point it at. When it is just as I like it, I go to the top right hand corner and click done. Then I go to the bottom right hand corner and click done. It then saves my photo and if I go to my photo roll, I can see my picture now has an arrow on it. So that is everything that I have for you today. If you're still here and wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it so much. And if you're new and not subscribed, I would love to have you back. Just hit the subscribe button down below. And if you hit the notification bell, it will let you know when I release new videos. Thank you so much for watching and everybody have a great day. Bye.